What's up guys, today I got a pretty neat video that I want to share a couple of the tips and tricks that I've learned that'll help you guys around the shop. So let's dive into this. All right guys, like I mentioned in the intro, this is going to be a video of some tips and tricks that I've put together that makes my life a little bit easier around the shop and hopefully it will be yours as well. Now, a lot of you guys have been in the game a lot longer than I have, so you may already know some of these tricks or you may know some better ways to do them. But either way, I thought these were pretty cool and I think you guys will enjoy them. So let's get started with them. All right guys, one of the first things I wanna to talk to you about is soldering. Y'all all know that I prefer to solder wires than butt connectors. I made that extremely clear in a lot of my videos. And I just feel like solder does a lot better job. You're not gonna pull it apart and yada, yada, yada. There's just a lot of benefits to soldering that I think is better than using a butt connector. Well, a lot of guys have expressed concerns that they feel like that using heat shrink will allow moisture to get into the connection and cause it to have those green crusties that'll be in there and cause problems going down the road. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to fix that issue and knock those complaints out simply by using dielectric grease. Dielectric grease is a great additive when doing solder along with the heat shrink tubing, and I'll show you how simple it is. What I do is I apply the dielectric grease directly onto the solder joint I take my finger and I wipe it around to ensure that everything is coated really well with dielectric grease. Then I simply slide my heat shrink tubing over the connection. Use the heat shrink, heat it up, get it sucked down nice and tight. And that's going to alleviate any moisture that may be inside of that joint. There's no way water and corrosion can get in there at this point because it's completely watertight and waterproof. It's a good solid joint, no issues. Even if you use it outside under a trailer or under a hood area, anywhere where water can get in it, this is going to be a foolproof method to keep water out of the joint. Okay guys, another tip that I wanna do, I wanna talk about or address is I still like to use the old school test light like this and it just works really well for me and when I, my style of diagnostics, if you will, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, don't poke, pierce, probe the wires, it's gonna cause the green monsters, the crusties. You're gonna have problems with that down the road. I highly disagree because I take care of things a little bit different than most guys. Right here is my answer. So you guys can see liquid electrical tape. This stuff works wonders. You simply pierce your wire to test it like you always do. Okay, when you're done, you can see it's got a little fine hole there not a big deal simply take some of this liquid electrical tape and what I try to do <clears throat> is I will actually poke it down inside where I pierced and then coat over the top of it okay so like I was saying there's no way moisture can get in there at this point it's completely sealed. The hole is full of liquid electrical tape and it's brushed over the top. So that should eliminate any of the concerns that you have of corrosion or moisture getting inside the wire coating. This stuff is invaluable. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it. It's the best seven, eight bucks you'll ever spend if you do much electrical work or diagnostic work. All right guys, so my next hack is, let's say you've got a bolt that you have to put down inside the engine bay, like maybe on the back of the valve cover or whatever. You can't reach it with your finger and you know, they make the magnetic sockets or the magnetic socket inserts. I know Lang makes them, but you know, not everybody may have them so it will hold on to your bolt while you're trying to get it fed down in there. For example, like if you've got it on an extension where you have to reach down in there, you know, to get it started, 
the trap with a regular socket. You hold it up. Of course, it's just going to fall out. And then you're going to have to fish out the bolt. So, if you don't have a magnetic socket like this that'll hold it in there, don't sweat. I'll show you a trick. Just take a piece of painter's tape. I love painter's tape. I think it's one of the greatest things to have around a shop. Simply put it over the head of your bolt. Take your socket, push it on there. Then you can reach down in there and get it started. And then once it's started, you pull it up and you pull your tape off, whatever. Or if you don't have any painter's tape, you can take just regular paper towel, take a piece of it, do the same thing, lay it over the head of the bolt, stick it in there. Now you can reach down in there and get it started so you don't drop your bolt down into whatever you're working on just a quick little tip and that way if you guys don't want to spend the money on a set of magnetic sockets or the inserts there you go that's how you do it all right guys so my next little hack comes for any type of magnets that you may have around the shop um i like it on my battery lights you know as far as you stick them to a car under a frame they get that rust and crust on them you set it on the shop floor they pick up metal shavings it's always a pain in the butt to clean the magnets off so what i always do makes it super simple take you a piece of painter's tape cover your magnet may take a couple of pieces and you can use duct tape or you know, any kind of tape and just wrap it around your magnet and it will still allow it to be magnetic. But then when it gets that funk and grit on it, you just peel it off, put you a new piece of tape on it and you're ready to go. It's always super hard to get all those shavings and stuff off of this and you stick it to a fender and then you end up scratching the paint. Well, this trick eliminates that completely. I've used electrical tape, I've used uh, duct tape, I've used gorilla tape. Any kind of tape will work fine. And you just peel this off when it gets dirty and you're ready to go again. And that saves you a lot of trouble and headache going forward. That way you can clean your lights off without having to stress over scratching paint jobs in the future. Super quick, super easy, and very efficient. Check that out. All right, on my next little hack, I know a lot of guys around the shop refuse to close doors. Um, like this is going into our office where it's heated and cooled. I have an air conditioner in there and a heater in there. Well, a lot of guys just will not close the door. Even though when you write stuff on the door, like keep the door shut, they won't do it. So you put a bungee cord on there. Simply take the hook out, run your screw through there. Screw the other end here. They have no choice but to close the door. Super efficient. Um, I actually like it better than a spring. They seem to last longer than a spring. So that's a cool little tip. If you got guys in your shop that can't remember to shut the door, that will do it for them. All right, guys. So we all know that leverage really helps when you're trying to break a bolt loose or tighten up a bolt and not everybody may have a really long 3 8 ratchet or a half inch ratchet or whatever. You may just have a standard length, you know, six inch ratchet and it makes it extremely hard. Of course, you could use a cheater pipe and then you have to look for a pipe that'll actually fit over here. But everybody's got sockets and extensions in their box and that's where this tip comes in. You simply take your six inch ratchet, find a socket, a deep well that'll go over it Take you an extension and put over it. And now you have a very long ratchet, same length. So if you guys don't have a lot of ratchets and need to break something loose, or maybe you're on the side of the road and you need some extra leverage, go grab you a deep well, an extension, and there you go. You got a long ratchet. All right, guys, the same thing goes for wrenches as well as the ratchet trick that I just showed you, of course, the longer something is, the easier it is to break loose or put extra torque on it when you're tightening it. So let's say you got a 16 millimeter 
Not everybody may have a wrench this long. It's really easy. You get your 16 millimeter wrench. Take the next wrench up and there you have it. You simply slide it over there and there you go. Want to go the other way, same thing. There you go. If you don't have a wrench extender, two wrenches will work just fine. Give you the extra leverage you need to break something loose with. All right, guys, another little quick tip and trick that I want to share with you, especially guys that work on big trucks that have airlines. Say you got a, a, a manifold or a brake valve, something that's got a lot of different airlines coming off of it, and you're going to have to replace it. Um, you know, it's real quick and easy to take a picture of it, but um, a, a tip that I've kind of learned that's made things a little faster is to simply mark stuff, and that way it makes it easier going back together. Um, obviously, there's paint pans. They're super cheap. They work great. You can put a piece of tape around it, number them, whatever you want to do. But one of the cool tips um, that I learned is actually, if you know somebody that works at the phone company, you can get some of this phone cable, and it's hundreds and hundreds of little wires in here that are different colors. You can simply snip off a piece of this and mark your airlines with it or wiring with it or whatever. But don't be afraid to mark stuff and that way it goes back together the way you need it. Um, I'm the world's worst. I'll draw a diagram before I take a belt off, even if it's something as simple as a 350 Chevrolet that we've done before or a 54 Triton. I'll take a notepad and draw around um, to make myself a diagram, know how the belt goes back on. But anytime you can mark stuff, and that way it makes it easier going back together, take a few minutes and, you know, whatever system works for you, go with it because to me it just makes it a whole lot faster. I've used nail polish before the tape trick with numbering them, um, but I really like the foam cord, especially when you have a whole bunch of different colors. You can twist say the, the red and orange around the, um, the airline and then put it on the brake fitting itself. When you get ready to go back together, all you do is make sure the colors are the same. Super quick, super easy, and it's a method that I use and I actually like it. All right guys, so my last tip, um, of course I like to keep my tools looking clean. As you can see, these are, these are pretty bad or I used on my job. So simple, answer is tub of towels. I use them to wipe down my box. Try to keep everything looking nice. These things work. They don't damage your comfort grips. Um, they're cheap. They're easy to use. And you simply wipe it on. What I do is wipe it on a little, little bit of the juice get on there. Let it set just a few seconds while I'm kind of saturating the other side of it. And then like I'm just barely wiping, you can see what's come off of it. And then I will kind of scrub it down. I don't take the four or five seconds per handle. I wish they sold the liquid that they soak these tiles with in a spray bottle. And that way you could clean pretty much anything. This stuff cuts grease. It works really well. And what I like about it, there's no damage to any of your tools or anything like that. And like you see, now that I've got them scrubbed down nice and clean and don't rust your tools, the tub of towels simply work. All right, guys. So there's a couple of quick tips and tricks that I know of. I've got several more in store. They just kind of come in my brain and leave as the wind. So <laughs> maybe after I get another list together, I'll share them with you guys. Hopefully you liked it. And if you have any tips or tricks, share them down in the comments. Who knows? We may feature them in the next video. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked it. If you do, hit that thumbs up and click that subscribe button. It's free. Never costs you guys a dime. Y'all have a great week and we will catch y'all next time. See ya.